Roger Federer has announced his retirement, and it wouldn't be an overstatement to say that the world's in mourning. We'd wager more people were heartbroken over Roger's retirement than anything else. Any takers? Either way, let's take a look at his retirement message and then dive into some of the greatest moments of Federer in Grand Slams. Let's begin, starting with Roger's retirement message. You really never know when a good moment's gone. It's like Andy Bernard's iconic line from The Office, I wish there was a way to know you were in the good old days before you actually left them. Think about it. Had we known that the last time we'd see Federer was when he turned up for Wimbledon in 2021, we would have cheered him on a little harder than we did and maybe enjoyed him a little more. Or convinced Hubert Hercatch to throw the game. We're kidding. We're kidding. But that's just life. We knew the day would come, but Federer had promised a return and he was set to play in the Laver Cup and then the Basel Open until suffering a setback. Federer posted on his socials that he had decided to end his competitive career. A man of his word, Roger will return to play in the Laver Cup in London, but it will be his final ATP event. We were devastated reading that message. In the message, Roger promised to play more tennis in the future and we're happy about that, but it's the end of an era, truly. In the most Federer way possible, the great man thanked everyone involved in his career and acknowledged the great support that fans had given him over the years. If that isn't modesty, then what is? We're the ones who should be thanking him for producing tennis that should be hung in the Louvre. Thank you, Roger. It's been an honor watching that glorious forehand and that backhand. Tennis will miss you and that Wilson won forever. Up next, a look at Federer's best Grand Slam moments. Before we dive in, we just want everyone to know that Wimbledon 2019 didn't happen, at least not in the multiverse where we exist. First up, the 2003 Wimbledon breakthrough. Roger Federer turned up at Wimbledon in 2003 as just another player, but he'd already tasted success on those hallowed grounds five years earlier when he lifted the 1998 junior title at the All England Club. No one gave him a chance when he came up against Pete Sampras in 2001, the greatest player the world had ever seen up until that point. Sampras, a seven-time Wimbledon champion, knew the center court a lot better than Federer. Again, up until that point, he was on a 31-match winning streak, but Federer broke that and then two years later, he earned his first ever Grand Slam triumph, defeating Mark Philippoussis in straight sets. Next, the starting point of Federer's dominance of New York. Federer entered the U.S. Open for the fifth time in 2004. The challenge in front of him was a huge one. Another Australian, but a much more well-rounded player, Leighton Hewitt. Little did Hewitt know that he'd be involved in the breaking of a record that had stood for 120 years, and he'd be at the wrong end of it. Yeah, no one since 1884 had been handed two bagels in U.S. Open's championship match, but it was also the first time Federer was playing a U.S. Open final. Something had to give. The Swiss maestro began his dominance of the U.S. Open by defeating Hewitt 6-0-7-6-6-0, and it would be the first of five in a row that would follow in New York for the legend. No one has made it two in a row since. Moving on, Rafa's arrival and the 2005 French Open. Of course, it wouldn't be all wins now, would it? How can we talk about Federer's insane Grand Slam? achievements and leave out the biggest factor, Rafael Nadal. Roland Garros set the tone for the federal rivalry, and while Federer would never beat Nadal in Paris, despite meeting six times in 15 years, it was still a major point of their rivalry. Rafa, a 19-year-old, would defeat Federer in the semifinals of the 2005 edition and would go on to lift his first ever Grand Slam title at the age of 19. This was the start of the most special rivalry in the history of the sport, as Federer simply couldn't hack Nadal's high bouncing, top-spinning lefty forehand that battered Federer's beautiful single-handed backhand. Adding to the list, the 2007 Wimbledon final. Federer and Nadal met for the 13th time in only a few years, and it was the second time they were meeting in the final of Wimbledon, Nadal having lost the previous meeting in four sets in 2006. Federer, on the other hand, was coming into the final with a bid to make it five in a row at the All England Club and it wouldn't be easy because Nadal was leading the head-to-head 8-4. -head For one whole year, the 2007 Wimbledon final remained the greatest in history, but was soon dethroned by the 2008 Wimbledon final again between these two, but more on that later. Federer won the first set after an intense tiebreak before losing the second set to Nadal 6-4. In the third set, Roger produced an insane display of tennis and managed to dominate the tiebreak to take the third and lead the final with two sets to one. 
won. Nadal, though, simply didn't give up, and he came back with a vengeance, breaking Federer twice to force a decider. In the final set, the king of center court rose highest and completed the job efficiently 6-2 to win in incredible fashion and make it five in a row. On to the hardest loss by far in 2008. In 2008, the two gladiators met again in Wimbledon. Nadal was destroying Federer in the head-to-head -head once again, but he hadn't done it in Wimbledon. This time, though, he had a game plan and he nailed it. Nadal had raced into a two-set lead at Wimbledon and was on the brink of doing the impossible. He gave it his all in the third set tiebreak as Federer edged it to stay in the match. The the fourth set, however, was even more intense, as Federer came from behind to level the match and force a decider. Unsurprisingly, the crowd was wearing their hero on, but Nadal had the final say as he edged the match 9-7 in the fifth set, and Federer explained how it was the hardest loss of his career by far. Moreover, the career slam. Robin Soderling still believes that he deserves a gift every Christmas from Roger Federer for what he did in 2009. The finalist of the 2009 French Open, Soderling did so something that even after 13 years remains unexplainable. He defeated Nadal on Chatrier and met Federer in the final. Roger Federer made the light work of Soderling, defeating him in three, and it was his only appearance in the final of a French Open where he didn't face Nadal and he won it. Talk about being clutch. He completed the career Grand Slam and became only the sixth man ever to do it. Not to mention that he tied Sampras's record of 14 majors as well, with a chance to go past his idol in Wimbledon next. Not to forget the 2009 Wimbledon final. Pete Sampras was in attendance to watch Federer make history. He did have a remarkable Andy Roddick trying his level best to delay the inevitable, but he'd already lost to Federer twice in the final. Could he be lucky a third time? Well, to his credit, Roddick was perfect on the day. He didn't get broken once all match, until the very last game of the match after 4 hours and 16 minutes. The heartbreak was real, but for Federer, it was number 15, and he went past Sampras in the most incredible manner. Up next, the promised return in 2017. Federer hadn't won a major since 2012, and people thought he was done. Then in 2016, he got injured in Wimbledon, and it really felt like the end. The Swiss maestro, though, returned to action in 2017, and it was a better return than even he himself would have dreamt. Of. The champion battled long and hard and reached the final, but it was against someone who led him in major finals by 2 6. Yeah, Rafael Nadal. Somehow, Roger rolled back the years and came from behind in the fifth set to win one of the most special and emotional majors he's ever won against his biggest rival and friend. Lastly, number eight in Wimbledon. 2017 was truly special for Roger Federer. After winning the Australian Open and completing the Sunshine Double, FedEx entered Wimbledon, aged one month later less than 36. Age was hardly a limitation for him, though. He defeated Marin Cilic in just over 100 minutes to become the oldest male champion of Wimbledon in the Open era. It was the eighth Wimbledon title of Federer's career and also his last. That's a wrap for this video. Which of these Federer moments is your favorite? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.